Now, housing-related inflation remaining one of the biggest contributors to services inflation in today's PCE report, rising 0.3 percent. And we know renting can be expensive. So here to discuss where you can get the most bang for your buck across the U.S., we've got Doug Ressler, Rent Cafe Senior Analyst. Doug, it's great to speak with you here. So talk to me about some of the best cities that you've found where you can get rent as, as low as $1,500 a month, which, uh, not to show my bias here, but that does sound very low coming from someone who rents in New York City. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. $1,500 a month was chosen out of a nationwide average uh, for apartments. So yes, you're right. Uh, what we found is we were doing a comparison. Rent Cafe did the article, Yardi Metrics data. We're part of Yardi Systems. And basically what we found is that on the average, renters can expect, again, this is a national number, about 729 square feet nationwide for that amount of money. Where do you get the biggest uh, square footage? Uh, Wichita, Kansas, Toledo, Ohio, Oklahoma City, Midwest. Uh, why is that? Because the Midwest has gone for many years because of undersupply. It's getting new supply now. There are tech hubs. Uh, there are foreign companies that are relocating there. Reshoring is going on. The availability of land is a little bit freer in terms of density, like you have with gateway cities. And so what you're seeing is that price relates in terms of what developers can do for amenity-rich type of development with larger apartments. In addition, we also see that millennials are running longer which means that they are starting families and need more square footage. And so with that square footage, um, like for example, Wichita, Kansas, 1359 square feet. Now the starter home, average starter home nationwide is about 1400 square feet. So it pretty mm. much approximates it. Yeah, it's a really good point, Doug. The issue, and I'll, I'll personalize this, I can't uh, you know, be an anchor on a finance program in Wichita, Kansas. Unfortunately, so many of the jobs that myself and my friends and colleagues want to pursue careers in are, are based in some of those big coastal cities that are so expensive. What is your advice to those folks whose career ambitions and personal finance ambitions uh, as it relates to their housing don't always coincide? Well, like your previous guest, do your research. Uh, Rent Cafe, uh, Yardi, both have platforms that people can use to be able to assess their needs and where they want to live. It's more than just about the house that you want or the price you want to pay. It's also the social environment uh, that goes on, the type of things that people want to do in terms of urban planning and lifestyle preferences. So do your research and look at it longer term. It's not just you know, over the course of 12 months, but it would be longer term in terms of the next two years, what you see. If you're getting an education, uh, if you're going to be employed in the same general area, you know, what does that mean? Obviously, the suburbs versus urban density also uh, give space allowances for that, especially in gateway cities like Philly and New York City. What is it looking like for some of those gateway cities? Are we seeing any price declines in some of those mid-tier cities for folks, or is it still going up? Uh, we have been seeing decelerization in rent, reason being it's economics 101. There's a there's unprecedented amount of new supply coming on board, uh, almost 500,000 units this year and almost 500,000 units next year. Uh, that is going into uh, a lot of the gateway cities, and so with that, the consumer has more options to choose from, and with that, it drives prices down.